This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! World Chalice combo tutorial video post the September 18th, 2017 ban list in which Digesto Emerald was banned. But the deck did get a huge boost in terms of starter cards and extenders that we have accessibility into because of Rescue Rabbit going to 3. So because of Rescue Rabbit going to 3, we can actually start focusing more on some of the combos that it enables as a starter card because it's more reasonable for you to expect to see the card now. The card is at 3, so it's a card that you should be seeing a reasonable amount of the time, and it does fall in line with one of those things. It's a starter card and an extender in the same way that Venus is, in the same way that World Legacy World Chalice is. Like, it, it basically just expands upon this deck's capability of play and play structuring, and so it's definitely worthwhile to start looking into the combos that it can provide. So, what I'm going to show you today is a simplified combo of how to get to your Ningirsu and get some draws, and it is going to be a combo of Rescue Rabbit plus World Legacy World Chalice. And what this does is it doesn't give you the best situation to be in as far as your Ningirsu draw goes, but it does still give you an Ningirsu draw too, and it is still a plus three to your total card advantage. So it is worthwhile to, you know, understand and know because, you know, you basically have two Rescue Rabbit-like effects going off because you've got the Rescue Rabbit itself and then World Legacy World Chalice being a Rescue Rabbit specifically for the deck itself. So things to consider. But anyway, so this one with just these two cards, like I said, gets you a draw two off Ningirsu and you get a plus three overall. Uh, but then there's ways to expand upon it, obviously, with other monsters in your hand. But so, you're going to normal summon Rescue Rabbit to start the combo off, and you're going to banish it to summon two vanillas from your deck, whichever ones you're running. Uh, it can be Chosens, it can be Beckons, it can be whatever. And then you're going to link with one of your vanillas into Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. And then you're going to gain your additional normal summon to tribute your Chosen for World Legacy World Chalice. Well, it doesn't really matter if you tribute Chosen or if you tribute Imduk, because honestly, you're going to still end with two World uh, Chalice cards on the board to make Aurum, but at the same time, like, there are some certain factors that go into it once you expand upon the combo that make leaving Imduk the better option. But, so you're going to link into two with the World Legacy World Chalice and the Imduk into Aurum, the World Chalice Blademaster, and your World Legacy World Chalice is going to go off there. And you're going to special summon World Chalice Guard Dragon, and Lee the World Chalice Fairy from your deck, and then the Lee is going to trigger its effect adding any World Chalice card from your deck to your hand, any World Chalice monster. It can be another World Chalice, uh, World Legacy World Chalice. It could be the third Vanilla, which is what I usually go for. Uh, there's there's a few different things that can uh, that can basically happen there, but it's, it's all subjective to like what your deck build is, essentially. But you do want to end up with at least Lee and Guard Dragon in your circulation pool. But so because these are different types and attributes, you're going to link with these two into your Eve of the World Chalice Priestess, and then from here, you are going to be able to use the World Chalice Guard Dragon's effect in your graveyard to banish itself and summon back one of your vanillas that you had used. So you'll summon back the Chosen, in this instance, back to one of these zones, and then you are going to actually, uh, you're actually going to summon it in this zone specifically, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be linking away with Aurum. Uh, we're going to be linking away with Aurum, but we want to use its effect first before we do that, just because it just makes more like logical sense to do so, uh, essentially. But so summon Chosen in the zone that Aurum points to, and use Aurum's effect to tribute Chosen, and to bring back your Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon here. Uh, the reason to do this is so that you can serve some extra deck resources in the form of you don't have to run through your extra Imducks, but also because we can only get a draw 2 out of this specific combo string anyway, and we're going to be linking away with the Aurum, right? So it just makes better, like, logical sense to go ahead and use the Aurum's effect here and not have to waste a card out of your extra deck just so that you can, you know, uh, get some better uh, situations. Now, you don't have to necessarily do that, but it does, you know, change things based off what your hand is uh, for, like, your other hypotheticals. But So with the Imduk and the Aurum, you're going to link into three with those into your Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior, in the zone that is being opened up by Eeb, and then Ningirsu will be Chain Link 1, and either Imduk or Aurum will be Chain Link 2, and you can Special Summon the Chosen from your hand and give yourself two draws. So, you generate three extra cards off of two, so it is a plus three to your card advantage, and you do draw two cards off the Ningirsu, but it's not necessarily what I would consider optimal because of the fact that, you know, you almost always want to be drawing three off Ningirsu, and stuff like that, but it's definitely a play that you can understand and know how to do. 
but it's very easily expandable once you start adding other world chalice monsters to your hand. So I'm going to rewind real quick, reset up, and I'm going to show you what happens if you have literally any world chalice monster or any monster in your hand, actually. It doesn't even have to be specifically a world chalice monster. It can be any monster. All right, so expanding upon the previous combo, if you add any monster into your hand that you do not require, that is a non-combo piece, essentially, whether it's a rogue shine ball, a kaiju that's useless in your hand, uh, something like um, like a duplicate hand trap, like if you have too many ghost ogres or ash blob systems in your hand, and you want to rotate that out for actual card advantage, this is something that you want to be looking towards doing. Now, this doesn't give you any extra advantage in terms of what your ending field and what your ending plus count is going to be, because it is still going to end you with six cards, being a plus three overall from what you invested into it. Um, but and you were still only going to draw two cards off Ningirsu, but what it does is it leaves your board in a more moldable state because you don't end up using your Aurum effect and stuff like that. So it doesn't matter what the monster is. Obviously, if it's a World Chalice name, then it obviously is easier to utilize. It lets you keep uh, your Lee resource and grave uh, loaded. But even if it's just a, a literally a card that you don't require, like a Shine Ball in your hand, then you can rotate that out for advantage in your combo sequence. So your normal summoning rabbit, and you're going to banish the rabbit to summon your two vanillas from deck. Uh, in this case, I'm going to summon two Chosens. You'll link with one of the Chosens into Imduk, and then your Imduk is going to gain you the additional Normal Summon over your Chosen for World Legacy World Chalice, and then you are going to link with these two cards into your Aurum, the World Chalice Blade Master. Now, World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger, and you are going to summon the World Chalice Guard Dragon and the Lee out of your deck yet again, and then the Lee's effect is going to trigger searching for any uh, World Chalice Vanilla, essentially. Uh, the Vanillas are just easier to work with in terms of your combo structuring, uh, because it, they allow you more access into things like your uh, Rank 1, uh, not Rank 1s, your Link 1s, like Imduk and Link Spider. Uh, so it's just easier to add those to your hand, basically. But so from here, you're going to link with these two into your Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, yet again. And then you are going to use Lee's Graveyard Effect to discard your monster if it wasn't a World Chalice name. Um, if it was a World Chalice name, you can skip this step, or you can discard another different monster, make it a four-card combo. But if it's any random monster, like the Shine Ball, you discard it to bring the Lee back to your hand. And then from here, you're going to use the Guard Dragon's Effect, banishing itself to Special Summon the Chosen from your graveyard in the zone that the Aurum is pointing to. Now from here, all you're going to do is very simple. You're going to link with your Chosen into Imduk, uh, and then you are going to link with the Eeb and the Imduk, leaving the Aurum up here for your Ningirsu in the middle zone, because that's the only zone you can summon into because Aurum is the only thing unlocking zones for you, and you just got rid of Eeb, because you're really low on resources, really, in this combo in terms of being able to put things where you want to. Uh, but it does allow you to structure things differently by, you know, again, rotating that useless monster out of your hand for advantage in your combo sequence. But so, your Ningirsu will be chain link 1, but it's currently pointing to nothing, but your Imduk and your Eeb will be chain link 2 and 3, so you will summon the Chosen and the Lee from your hand into the zones next to where the Ningirsu is pointing, and then you will draw yourself two cards. So overall, you invested three cards into this combo sequence, and you still ended up with six, so it is a still plus three card advantage yield overall, and you do still draw two cards off Ningirsu. But what this is very significant for is that in the previous combo sequence, while you didn't need to use Aurum, in this one you 100% don't have to use Aurum, like in any stretch of it. Like the previous combo sequence, you didn't have to use Aurum, but I prefer to, because you're linking away with it anyway to make the Ningirsu. Whereas in this combo sequence, you're going to be leaving the Aurum on board, so there's no reason to use it, because it's going to be completely loaded with its effect. You can make Ningirsu and Lee into a Firewall Dragon, summon some like more World Chalice names out of your hand or whatever, and then use Aurum to bring back Ningirsu and you know continue your combo sequencing further in that regard, in that fashion. So, the first combo was two cards, and it gave you five cards to work with in the form of the Ningirsu, the two monsters on board next to Ningirsu, and the two cards in your hand, so it was five cards. And for this one, it's three cards, and it translates into six. So they're both plus three combos, but this one is overall better because it gives you the Aurum that you're able to use for your freeform combos from this point forward, as well as, basically, what it allows you to have access to is it allows you to have access to nice, cool Firewall Dragon plays, but also the main point being it turned... Whatever, whatever, whatever random monster was in your hand that was literally doing nothing. The Shine Ball in your hand, in this instance, was doing nothing. If you had a Kaiju in your hand, it's doing nothing. If you had a Hand Trap in your hand, 
it's doing nothing. It's not doing anything turn one. You can turn it into a combo potential uh, thing. And as well as with hand traps as well, this is really cool because you could turn a hand trap into a combo piece, making this combo happen. And this combo facilitates summoning firewall dragons very, you know, efficiently. Uh, so what you're able to do then is you're able to make firewall dragon and then just add back the hand trap after you're done comboing with the firewall dragon effect. So like that's actually a really cool niche thing as well. Definitely something worth uh, looking into and investing into in terms of a play string that you could go down. So basically knowing this combo sequence and knowing how you're able to use these resources is very good for you overall uh, because of the fact that you can just turn duplicate monsters in your hand that you don't need or useless monsters in your hand into advantage in some form. The Orem is still here and unused and the Nagirsu has still drawn two cards. Uh, there's multiple other ways to expand upon this if, depending on what other monsters you had in your hand as well but that starts getting into very specific situations like I've said previously I don't want to you know jump into that deep into that pool because it's just we're going to be here for hours essentially but anyway that's basically it for this video I wanted to show you those two combo sequences as far as you know the first one and then how you can expand upon it and why it's beneficial for you to know how to expand upon these combo sequences for the new format without digesto emerald and stuff like that Rescue Rabbit definitely adds a, uh, a huge depth layer to this deck's starting like combo plays because, you know, Rabbit plus Venus is some certain plays. Uh, like, Rabbit plus World Legacy World Chalice is certain plays. Rabbit plus Lee the World Chalice Fairy is certain plays. Like, there's, there's so many different plays that Rabbit enables by being a starter card and then also being an extender later in the game because you can summon it off Firewall. It's actually just really cool for the deck in general. But anyway... As always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more World Chalice videos and more World Chalice combo tutorials. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you really enjoy the content that I create and want to help support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support and help keep the channel alive. As well as you get access into a bunch of different reward tiers and reward options like monthly giveaways and my private Discord server and stuff like that. So definitely go check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know or a lot more than you may understand, as I always say, and you always have my eternal gratitude as you already should know. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.